Um, so tell me, what was it like growing up in Danbury, Connecticut? Danbury is, I feel like I know it like the back of my hand. It's, there were like few locations where my friends and I would choose to hang out. Obviously Danbury Fair Mall, everyone would go there. Um, Elmer's Diner is where I would go with my family for breakfast. And it was just, I, I, I pride myself in having a few quality friends. And we would, you know, there was a time we were all living in Danbury together and, and we would, you know, hang out all the time and Candlewood Lake, the Powell Building, we would play basketball. Um, and, you know, now when I'm going back to visit my family, like, it's, I'm just reminiscing about all these places where as the weather gets better to go do all that stuff again. You weren't born in Danbury, though. You came no. here when you were four years old with your family from India. Yeah. What was that like? Well, it's, I, you know, I've been back to visit. I was born in Hyderabad, uh, India, and uh, half my family lived in New Delhi. Half of them lived in uh, Hyderabad. And, you know, when I came here uh, when I was four, I, don't, I didn't really remember anything of India. So I was just so, it was so important to me to feel like being one of my friends in school becoming Americanized and um, and since I came here when I was four I feel like I lost the accent and I remember how to speak Hindi and, and I understand it but um, even my family like we we loved the American culture and you know we uh, we would go to baseball games we would hang out with American friends 4th of July everything so um, it's not like I have much of a relationship with India as much. I, I want to go back as soon as possible. My family, my parents are actually currently there right now visiting family. So uh, um, yeah, I mean, for, for as long as I can remember, I've been in America. So. <laughs> are there any siblings? I have one sister, one younger sister, who's basically like a second mom to me. She's, really? She's so, she's the opposite of me. She's so <laughs> responsible. <laughs> She, she's actually a nurse at a children's hospital. And like, here I am, just this like selfish actor who's like, me, 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 me. And she's just giving. She, all she wants to do is work with children. Uh, she's great. Yeah. You guys are very close. Very close, yeah. She, she would help me, even when she was in school, she would help me with auditions. I would annoy her about staying up late and working with me. And I would not, I would not be here talking to you if it wasn't for my mom, my dad, and my sister, so, yeah. What are their names? My mom's name is Rama, my uh, dad's name is Anand, and my sister's name is Ahana. Were they always supportive of you becoming an actor? Yes, and that's where I think I'm very lucky in that aspect because I was terrible in school. Like, I, I suffered a lot with ADD and stuff, and um, I, the one thing I liked to do was make people laugh and to tell stories and my dad, my dad and I grew up watching a bunch of movies and um, when he, when I told him, hey dad, I wanna, I wanna try acting, he was actually really excited and I think a part <laughs> of it was because he was like, okay, school is not cutting it for you, let's give this a shot and it's not only like the mental aspect, they, they, my whole family supported me mentally, but also financially. Like, I worked my fair share of jobs, and, but if it wasn't for them being like, we're gonna help you get to New York, we're gonna help you pay for school, like, I'm very lucky. Like, I, you know, I, yes, there was hard work involved and everything, but they, they've supported me since the beginning. At what age did you realize you wanted to become an actor? You know, I, when I was in high school, I was, I was really shy, I was really anxiety ridden, and, but I knew, like, I wanted to be an actor, but I remember, like, going to, like, acting, like, trying out for the acting classes, I was so shy and very stiff, and I was like, I want to do this, but I'm just not at a place yet where I can, where I feel like I can perform, and that was around, you know, 16, 17, 18. Um, and it was not until college where uh, I really was able to break out of my shell and I auditioned for plays and I got to be in plays and I was like, oh yeah, I want to do this for the rest of my life. 
especially like being here, like performing in front of a live audience. There's, there's really nothing like it. Yeah. How old were you when you had your first chance to do that? The plays? Mm -hmm. um, probably, oh God, um, 20, 21. Uh, I, I, I was in a play called Moon Over Buffalo. And, um, you know, it was, I felt really good about the audition. I was like, this is, this is, this is right for me. And I remember I booked the job and, you know, I was managing school work and also uh, working on the audition, uh, working on the show. And uh, there was not one part of me that was like, ah, maybe I don't want to do this. Every day I would come, come to set, come to, come to the um, theater, and I gave it my all. I, I wanted to do it. So I would say around 20 years old. So was that the turning point for you, where yeah. you realized this was something? This was actually possible for you? Yeah, maybe not, maybe not f like as a job. Like I didn't know like how I would support myself as a job, but I, I knew that I'm gonna find a way to do this for the rest of my life. Tell me about the Moon Over Buffalo production. Where was that out of? That was at uh, Naugatuck Valley uh, College in Waterbury, Connecticut. So I definitely want to talk about that. So you went to you went to college locally. I did. So you went to high school locally. You went to elementary school locally, mm -hmm. but you also went to college locally. Yeah. What was that experience like? You know, I um, I I knew I wanted to be in a place like New York or L.A., but to be honest, I just I don't think I had the grades to like go to or the money to to go to NYU or Tisch or, or something like that. And uh, I decided, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Naugatuck Valley and I'm gonna enter their theater program and see what happens. And obviously, it was it was financially better because I was able to commute and I was able to uh, live at home, but. I was genuinely, looking back at it, I'm genuinely surprised by how good and the quality of people that I was with. Uh, I, I had great friendships there, I had mentors there, um, people that I honestly, I think about any time I get a little bit of success, I'm like, oh, that's where I came from, that's where I really, um, I found myself as an actor and realized, oh, that's where I wanna be, that this is what I wanna do. And it, and it was a group of, individuals there that were like, I think you should go to New York. I think you should um, pursue acting in New York or LA, so. You're very close to your family and you're also very grounded. Talk about how, oh, I'm gonna give you a second to drink. Um, take your time, this is mm -hmm. all taped. Um, you're very, you sound like, it sounds like you're very rooted. You're very close with your family, you're grounded, you understand, you know, the importance of of being local, of growing up local. I, I feel like I get the sense from you that you you remember where you came from. And just tell us, tell us, where did Drew come from? Well, I, I came from, well, thank you for that, because that, that is what I want to emote. That's what I want to be. I, um, I really came from hardworking, independent people such as my mom and my dad, who are perfectionists, they are hardworking, they, much like me, this is where I get it from, we always have, we always need something to do because um, we don't really like being bored. And so I, and as an actor, you're gonna be bored a lot, whether it's on set, whether it's, you know, waiting for work to come along and, and it, I, what I got from them, which I'm really proud of and grateful for, is the need to always be working on my craft, the need to uh, exercise my creativity in one way or another. And so, and yeah, you know, I, I don't think of myself as a celebrity. I don't think of myself as, um, you know, even when I think of like, oh, I have fans, like, I'd like to think there are more fans of the show, and I, um, I think it's coming from a place of like, oh wow, I don't know if I really deserve all this. Like this is, this is, um, 
this is so sweet, but it's a, a lot of the work came from, a lot of these opportunities came from people who supported me. And so uh, I like to give off the energy of like, I'm, I'm as humble as I can be, I, uh, and that I, I want to stay grounded. It's important. Yeah. And my parents, you know, my parents wouldn't have it any other way. They, uh, one day I could be working with Damian Lewis, and the other day I'm, you know, washing the dishes with my parents. And it's like, it keeps me very, very grounded. You spend a lot of time in Connecticut? I do, especially right now. You know, I was, uh, I, you know, when I'm filming uh, the show, I'm in New York. But other than that, you know, I'm here in, in Connecticut. I'm with my family, uh, with my father, and helping him around the house a lot. And, um, yeah. Who was your number one inspiration growing up? And who guided you and really inspired you? And that you can say, like you said, this is why I'm here today. Who was your number one person that you looked up to growing up here? Even in your family. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't think I can just chalk it up to one person. I think for my family, it was probably my mom. Just seeing her work like three or four jobs, making ends meet for us. Um, even my dad, like, you know, my dad's been through so much physically. He's had a lot of surgeries and stuff. And, um, you know, life's really hit him hard. And just to see him bounce back all the time. Uh, though, those two, my mom and my dad, really showed me like to have resilience, to be determined. Acting wise, I would read the biographies a lot of actors that looked like me or were people of color who came from, who did not come from, you know, a lineage of actors who, who had to make it. And so as much as I admired, and I do admire, the Leonardo DiCaprio's and all these people, like I would look at people like um, uh, Carl Penn and, and see his, his rise and read his biography and, um, and, and people like that. So it was, for me, it was my parents watching them work hard and uh, people of color in the business. Representation is important. I think so. You must be inspiring so many Southeast Asian kids right now who would dream to be, to be in your shoes. I mean, tell me how that feels. You know, when I, I remember being on set one day and I was working with, a, working with an actor and he looked at me and he said, you know, Drew, this, this scene, you're going to get a lot of messages about from, you know, South Asian people who are like, that scene, was, that scene was awesome. Thank you for doing this. I'm so happy to see representation. And I really did not believe it. I was like, oh, come on, you know, it's, um, and then it happened. I remember in season four, and it still happens to this day, which I'm, I'm so, it's crazy to think about that it happens, but I'm so grateful for it, where I will get messages uh, from people from India, South Asian people were like, Thank you for representing us on screen. And that's like, I mean, that's the best feeling. That's, that's a bit of like why you do it. You know, you want to you represent yourself, represent people like you, not only in race, but people who have your type of personality, people who go through what you have gone through. And it's the best feeling. I, I do my best to reply to every single one of them uh, just because I feel like, you know, I feel like a bad person if I don't. Like, uh, of course, <laughs> like, of course you should. You're so nice. Yeah. Um, honestly, you're very approachable. I think it's one of the things that people love about you. Hmm. Uh, what do you have to say to other young actors out there? You know, I, like I said, everyone's situation is different. I was very lucky in the sense where I got to live in a place where it was easy to get to New York. I had support mentally and financially of my parents. But if there's one like unity of like what I think every actor can think about is realize why you want to be an actor 
and and think about that every day, especially when it really sucks to be an actor. Like there are going to be days. I mean, I hope there isn't for most of most of them. There were days for me where I was like, man, this is this is this is tough. This is rough, uh, especially with all the rejection and everything that comes with being an actor. And then you know, I would just have to remind myself, like, oh, I want to do this because. I have a hope, I have a dream, I have a goal of wanting to be in projects that inspired me when I was younger. And if I could just hold on to that, I can make it through another day and another day. So. You're on Billions. That's yeah. a huge show. Uh huh. I mean, how did you go from Naugatuck Valley Community College to Billions? What happened in between? and? I want to know everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've hit it big on Billions, a hit show. How did you do it? You know, if you look at it that way, it kind of looks like I just jumped to Billions. Uh, that's not the case. <laughs> um, I So after Naugatuck Valley, I went to the New York Film Academy. Um, and, you know, over there, I was, I was just trying to learn, like, what it's like to go from working in theater to working on in front of a camera. And after New York Film Academy, I started auditioning. I started, you know, I would commute about, you know, I would take the Metro North train from Brewster. I would go to New York, audition, come back. Sometimes it would be for two lines. It would be two minutes there. I would spend four hours commuting. Um, and I would, I would start off auditioning for student films and I did a few student films and then I met my manager uh, who you've who you've talked to uh, her name's Kate and uh, she's based out of New Jersey and I remember she told me like okay I believe in you I want to work with you <laughs> and uh, this is what you're gonna do she's very uh, she's very poignant and she knows exactly what she wants and I was looking for something like that. I was looking for guidance. Um, and, you know, we started working together and we started, I started auditioning. Uh, she sent me out for a bunch of auditions. And basically, before Billions, I've, I probably had hundreds of auditions. Um, and I remember two, three, two, three years before booking Billions, I, I booked a job in, uh, in, in Arkansas. Uh, I was doing a play there called Transatlantic. It was a new play, and that was my first time, obviously being in Arkansas, but actually being out of Connecticut or New York. And um, I remember I was there. I was living in an attic of, a, of, uh, of of somebody's house, and it was very. It was like a non-union project, so you know we were we were driving around, and you know, and it was in the middle of Arkansas summer, so it was really hot and. Uh, so I did that play, and that went really well. Um, and then I came back, and you know, I continued to audition. I, you know, I came close to a few projects. I, you know, when you when you, the thing with acting is like you get really close to something, and you're kind of taught like how to handle that, how to, how to book a show, book a job, but nobody really teaches you what the, the how to deal with the feeling of not booking something or like getting so close to like a life-changing project. And that's where my manager came in, you know, she really supported me also mentally. And, uh, and there was not one time where I was like, oh, I want to quit this uh, because I had so much support. So I remember I was, I was like up for a particular job uh, and I was waiting to hear back about that. And then I got the audition for Billions and I was such a fan of the show. I would watch it with my father and I, like what went through my head kind of in a cynical way was like, oh, I'm not going to get this. There's no way because this is, for me or in this life, like the things you want the most, you end up, it doesn't work out that way. And so, and you know, so I went in for the audition. I, re I remember it was in person when we had in-person auditions uh, and it was like 99 degrees outside, and I was in the subway, and I, I, something messed up. I missed my train or something, and, and I remember I was walking for it. It felt like a mile, and I was drenched in sweat. 
and I made it to the office and um, I remember I was downstairs and I was, I, I was in such sweat that I was taking off the first layer of my clothing and like whipping it like this because I was like, this is, this is the worst case scenario for me. Uh, and I remember I went upstairs and um, I, think I, I think I remember, I was like, I apologize for the stench. And they were like, what? And, um, and then I did the audition and I remember right there in the room, they were like, you're coming back for a producer session and you're gonna meet the creators. And I was like, okay, sure, yeah, whatever you say. And on, on the way to like the final audition, the other project that I was in contention for, that didn't work out. So I, like my mood got a little ruined. And, but I was like, OK, I have to be prepared to walk into this room and give it my all. And, and for me, I'm the type of actor that like I never know how something went, like an audition. Uh, I'm, I think every actor is like working on being better at that and forgetting about an audition once they leave. But um, you know, I did the audition. And I remember leaving the room going, I don't think I got this. Uh, and uh, you know, I was living at home at the time, so I would get on Grand Central, get home, and I'm sitting there in the, in the train car just thinking about it. And I'm like, OK, there goes another one. And I remember the moment I landed in, uh, in uh, Connecticut, I got a phone call saying uh, they want you for the role. And at that time, I thought it was, again, I thought it was two lines. I thought it was, a, um, I thought I put in all this work for a day of work. And I was so excited. I, w I wanted it so bad. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and then, you know, I, they kept me on the show. <laughs> yeah. So now it's two seasons on yeah, your third? I'm on my third, yeah. I, uh, we were talking about this earlier, but I mean, the first time I met everyone was at a table read in, uh, in Brooklyn. And, you know, Paul Giamatti's there and Damian <laughs> Lewis. And I'm just like, what is happening right now? What is this? And um, I remember going up to Damian. I was like, I just want to say, Band of Brothers, it's amazing. Thank you. He's like, oh, awesome. Thank you. And, uh, you know, he's so charming and great. And uh, I remember sitting there. And the casting director who I auditioned for was on my right. And she was like, oh, you're going to be here for a while. And I was like, oh, OK. And in my mind, I'm like, don't screw this up. This is great. And uh, yeah, you know, I started in season four. And now we're on season six. And it's, it's just crazy. What's it like working with those big name actors? It's. Um, Sometimes I like I step back and I'm like, oh, this is, I'm watching Damien or Corey Stahl or, or what, uh, you know, Maggie Siff. I'm watching them work, and it's a master class. It's, um, it's like the best teaching you can get. It's seeing them prepare for, uh, for a high octane scene and how they interact with uh, cast and crew. It's. It shows me how to be respectful, how to, how to lead by example. Um, and they're all warm. They're all so warm and welcoming, and they're supportive. And you know, now we've gotten to a point where I, we, I joke with them, and we're so comfortable. And, but there was a while where I wanted to be like Mr. Lewis. Mr. Lewis, thank you. Thank you for having <laughs> me on set. But, and, you know, and now Corey Stahl, who's, who is uh, in for season six, even him, it's just watching these high profile actors work and getting to work with them. It's amazing. Do you love it? Absolutely. I mean, I've loved it from since day one. This, you know, working every day just solidifies my love for it. Tell me about your character. My character's name is Tuck Lull. He is a, well, he's grown a lot. He's, he started off as a financial, um, he worked for Axe Cap in the beginning. Uh, he was a friend of Ben Kim's, played by Daniel Isaac. And he's a very shy, he was, I will say he was, a very shy, introverted person. Uh, genius, graduated from MIT and all these, you know, whatever you want to think of. And it's, He's, 
he's really good at what he does, which is in the stock market, financial advisor, you know, analyst, all this stuff. And he grows a lot from season four to season six, uh, which I'm so grateful for, for these writers to really uh, have him become, uh, become somebody that I look up to, that I'm proud of. And, um, and he sometimes, you know, he'll come in and save the day and help, um, and help uh, now Prince Capital. And, uh, and yeah. He's a really relatable character. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, for one, it's because these amazing writers, you know, Brian Koppelman, David Levine, they, they know how to write not only for the show, but for me, you know, and the more they got to know me and my personality and, and how I joke on set, the easier it got for them and for me to really play Tuck. And, I, I wanted Tuck to be, you know, he's surrounded by these alphas. He's surrounded by these high money makers and people like Dollar Bill and, and Corey Stahl's character, Michael Prince. And, um, and he is not that. He, he wants to impress. He wants people to accept him. And I thought, okay, I think, I think this world needs that. I think there is a group of individuals in the in in the real world who who are not all who are not like the rest of these characters but are like tuck and um and that's why i try to play him as vulnerable and as relatable as possible you do a great job thank you what's next for you well you know so um billions got picked up for a season seven which is so <laughs> exciting and um you know, I'm also I'm also writing. I'm also doing a lot of writing, writing my own projects and things that I hope to be in. And you know, things are too early right now in the process to really uh, say stuff. But hopefully, you know, a lot of my own work will be coming to fruition. One thing your manager Kate said about you, which I loved, was that you weren't going to let anything stop you from achieving your dreams. Yeah, that's very sweet of her. I, I, I think it's true. I, the way I think of it is like I, there was nothing, there's nothing else I wanted to do. Um, maybe life would have been easier for me if there was, but I knew whether I became successful at this or I wasn't, this is all I want to do. This is what brings me joy. This is, this is what brings me happiness. Um, and so, the determination came from a place of, um, this is all. This is what I want to offer the world. This is what I want to do, and uh, you know, uh, I won't really let anything stop me because because I I don't have a plan B. This is it.